Good morning. I'm Walt Bartman. I'm the director and founder of the Yellow Barn Studio in Glen Echo and on the board of directors of the Friends of the Yellow Barn Studio. And that's a support group uh, that supports the Yellow Barn. Uh, it's been founded about uh, in 1994 and uh, has uh, have about 600 members. Uh, we're going to be looking today at the um, uh, work that was submitted for our annual member show. And I have with me right now uh, a very distinguished uh, person by the name of Harry Cooper, who is the senior curator uh, at the National Gallery. And uh, he was our juror. So he's going to be speaking about the, um, the work. And, you know, hopefully you're going to get a lot of answers as to his selections. So uh, we're going to begin. So good morning, Harry. How are you? I'm great, Walt. How are you? I'm doing well. It's a good it's a good day and it's a pleasure to, to see you again. So thank you so much for um, uh, agreeing to do this video. And, um, you know, it's going to be really helpful to our members in order for them to see, you know, how you select things, especially during this pandemic, which unfortunately um, yeah. puts all of us in our own studios. Right. So everything was yeah. done virtually. I want everybody to know that. And, um, you know, in the past, we would be having the um, you know, the juror look through the work and make sure that the, um, you know, the, the, the selections that way. Uh, we had to go virtual this year and, uh, you know, it's a new format, but it actually works very, very well. And I think uh, we're going to let Harry uh, talk a little bit about that. So uh, with that, uh, Harry, do you have anything to say? You want to make any comments at this point? Well, um, this was a pleasure. There was a uh a lot of impressive work, a great variety of work, um, a lot of tough choices and, uh, you know, to some extent, they're, they're personal choices too. Um, but I'll try to give my, uh, give my reasons uh, for that. And um, I'm sorry, I couldn't see the works in person. That's not ideal, but, uh, but the, 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 the photography seemed really good. So I could, I could get a pretty good look at texture and, and factor and things mm -hmm. like that. And uh, uh, have you done any of these virtual um, uh, jewelry? I have. Uh, this is my first. This is yeah. this is the first. <laughs> yeah, we're all doing the first yeah. kind of thing around here. But you know, yeah. truthfully, it, it's worked well, and I think your choices are excellent. And you know, I think everybody's going to be um, surprised, but also, um, you know, they'll, they'll see how uh, the, the level, the quality of the of the the members of the friends the level of the work that people are, right. are doing. So, okay, with that, we're going to go on to uh, looking at this a screen here now. We're going to share screen, which is going to have a PowerPoint presentation. Okay. And uh, Harry will be speaking uh, about his choices here in a few minutes here. So here we go. Um, so we're going to share the screen. And uh, I want to welcome you to the 26th annual uh, Friends of the Yellow Barn Studio Member Show. We've been doing this uh, because it's a, an, a, an opportunity for our members to really show the great work that they've done uh, throughout the years. And uh, we had um, double the number, I guess we had close to 200 entries. So I think that that's, uh, a, a, you know, our largest number ever. So Harry, just so you know, you had to make some selections from a quite a, a large group of paintings. The And our memberships usually around uh, uh, 400 to, to 600 uh, people. So that was a pretty good number to have 200 entries from that from our group. Uh, as you see here, this is Harry's uh, uh, bio. Um, you know, he's a really distinguished juror. I mean, we, uh, you know, when we look at his career and we look at uh, his background, uh, you know, we couldn't have anybody better. And I think this is one of the things that I want you to know in selecting a juror, we want to have the best. So um, he is a senior curator and he's the head of modern art at the National Gallery. And he's been organizing exhibitions uh, throughout the years. Uh, I don't know, how, how far back does your career go? I kind of started a little bit late. So um, I think I'm, uh, I'm hitting the 25 uh, year mark as a curator. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, where were some of the uh, places that you um, worked before you were at the National Gallery? Well, the main one was um, at Harvard University, the Fogg 
art museum um, where I got my PhD, you know, and finished my art history studies. And in fact, this picture is, is from that era. So <laughs> um, in front of a, uh, a Ken Noland painting, it looks like that belonged to the fog, one of, one of, one of his great paintings. Um, so yeah, I did 10 years there and I've been at the gallery for a dozen years or, or more. Yeah, and you still look the same, Harry. Just so, you know, Harry. <laughs> so believe me, you're you're doing well. Um, the, um, the just to give you some background about the the, the annual Friends show, it, it's 26 years, which says a lot. Uh, you know, the Yellow Barn's been in existence uh, about that that long, and uh, we've served thousands and thousands of people uh, with classes and opportunities like this. Uh, I think, uh, you know, as I said, we're truly honored to have you, Carrie. I think, uh, you know, your choices were really excellent. Uh, one of the things that the Friends do is that they support uh, the show by giving awards, and a number of these awards are uh, supported by other um, organizations, and one of them is Plaza Artist Materials. They give us the $500 uh, award uh, each year. And I think they are a local arch store here in Bethesda, but also nationally, they have a number of stores. So they, you know, we can't thank them enough for their support, but uh, the other awards are sponsored through the donations uh, from the members of the Friends of the Old Barn. And, uh, you know, it's a $70 a year a membership, but I think, um, you know, the, um, the thing about that is that without the Friends, uh, we wouldn't have something like this happen. And I, I think it can be a catalyst for a lot of uh, artists when they receive an award or get into a, a, a juried show on the level of this one. So um, I want to give a special thanks to the uh, directors, uh, uh, the board of directors of the Friends of the Yellow Barn Studio, okay, and also the members who support, uh, have supported us throughout the years. Um, the board of directors, Jim Kettler is president. Uh, Susan Gallego is secretary, Larry Schleifer, treasurer, Michelle Escalant, technical advisor. He's the one that does the website. Uh, Leanne Houdershell is in charge of membership, and I'm the advisor to the group uh, being past president uh, for a number of years. So with that, we're going to go on to the first award, which is the Best of Show Award, the Plaza Artist Material Award. It's called Autumn on the Potomac. It's by Holly Bueller. And uh, Harry, do you uh, want to make any comments about this, uh, please? Sure. Well, best of show was tough, and I I uh, I kept going around and around, but I kept coming back to this this painting, which really grabbed me. It's uh, as you can see, it's just a small um, oil sketch, you know, plein air, I would guess, uh, wet into wet painting. Probably didn't take more than a an hour or two, I'm guessing. I don't know the artist, by the way. I, I didn't recognize the names of any artists, so, um, and I didn't look at CVs. It's really just going purely on what I saw as the merits, but um, I think uh, this has, I mean, it's in some ways it's very, very controlled. Um, the palette is controlled, you know, a little color goes a long way. There's a great use of, of grays that makes the other colors pop. Um, values are really all in the right place if you squint your eyes I think and um, and then there's almost like a single movement in here this drama of all of this uh, movement coming out from that sunset I would guess um, you know rushing towards us in the water in the sky or if you want to look at it the other way you know rushing back into the background but that that idea of just a sweeping movement and of course you know uh, you're out in nature, the sky, the river, there's um, just a wonderful, I, for me, uh, sense of um, nature uh, in motion. Um, great touch. Uh, you know, somebody I think who, who is um, very comfortable uh, working like this. And, uh, you know, I, I, um, I, I'm course curious you know does this painter do do other kinds of subjects um how would how would this painter approach a uh, an interior scene and uh you know so on and so forth but i i just um uh really uh really got into this 
Let me ask you a question. The, um, you know, since you're head of modern art at the, at the National Gallery, you know, the, um, the elements in here that might make it uh, uh, a contemporary painting, do you have things that you can say about it that way? Sure. Um, I mean, the paint is, is very present, right? The brush stroke is, um, it's descriptive. It's very descriptive um, and convincing, but uh, we also, uh, you know, can look over the shoulder of, of the artist and see those brush strokes, those knife strokes um, going right on the surface. So it, it remains um, at the same time, um, full of abstract and material uh, qualities that, uh, that we can enjoy uh, just for themselves. And uh, likewise, the color, there's some naturalistic aspects to the color, certainly, um, but it's heightened, you know, and, and, um, and, and the artist is um, sort of finding, finding the color and bring, bringing it out, uh, I think, in, in a really nice way. So there's a nice balance, maybe you could say, between, between contemporary feel and, and a really traditional, solid traditional landscape. Yeah, this is a painting that I think, um, when I look at it, um, can feel really big, you know, which I think is very interesting because it is a smaller painting, but it has that, that monumentality that I think, uh, you know, changes the dynamics of just the scale that it's painted on, you know. Absolutely. I was surprised when I saw the dimensions and I think um, that idea that you're really talking about of internal scale, you know, how do you create internal scale it really happens here. So, so there's some really tiny strokes like that little uh, indication of light through the trees on the right, uh, just above the horizon, small stroke like that can make, make the other strokes really, really um, look monumental and just, uh, yeah, that's um, a really uh, a sophisticated uh, painting. Well, yeah, and I, I really uh, think you did a great job of picking the, the, the best of show. This was one of my favorites as well. So uh, I can tell you the, uh, you know, the dynamics of it uh, was the most powerful thing for me. And uh, it's intriguing for me to just look at it. So here we go, we'll go on to the next one. And the next one is the uh, best watercolored wash painting. Uh, this is Sunny House by Laura Kalick. And, um, you know, I'd like to hear your ideas. Sure, sure. So um, there were a lot of, of lovely uh, watercolors in the show. And this is sort of an odd choice because it's not a traditional watercolor or gouache. I think it in some ways looks more like, like, a, like an acrylic painting, maybe. Um, and uh, I mean, there's a lot of white there, which, you know, watercolors and gouache paintings are sometimes, sometimes avoiding. Uh, so I think that, um, but, it, but it has a really fresh, uh, loose kind of liquid uh, touch of, of a watercolor. And um, what really grabbed me about it, I think is the composition, um, that jagged silhouette, that jagged roof line, the repetition of the windows, the, um, that white into black uh, contrast, a little bit of yellow, uh, hints of color uh, coming into the architecture. Um, nice uh, shadow there, you know, under the eaves that just finding shapes. So there's a high degree of abstraction here. And in fact, I'm not completely sure I, I, I could build this house, you know, that I understand every, every angle, but the uh, the shapes it makes the volumes it makes are are really interesting um, the windows you know we were talking earlier about psychology those those blank windows have, have a mystery to them and then the uh, bit of sky so um, uh, those are some of the things that I've liked about it a lot yeah there's a, a kind of duality for me here with the uh, nature and then the abstract form similar to what I think George O'Keefe uh, sort of found in her work. That's what I saw from your choice was uh, that. But I, I keyed right on the, the, the linear movements. The, mm -hmm. the, uh, I think the dynamics of that one line of that roof uh, yeah. just controls everything. And, you know, uh, what I look back on it 
I see like to loosen a trek because he was able to take that one line and build mm -hmm. the whole idea off of it. You know, right? So much, so much personality in, in that line, and I like the way the artist has uh, sort of found that with the the other end of the brush, little little scraping uh, going on. Um, I would think of Hopper, Edward Hopper too. You were talking about, you know, nature and architecture uh, together. Yeah. Boy, the sun's just hitting me in the face here. Uh, maybe, maybe almost as strong as the sun there. <laughs> it's enlightenment, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so the, uh, uh, yeah, this is, uh, uh, when I saw this one, I thought to myself, you know, this is that, uh, the, the strength of abstraction when you talk in terms of what it means to employ it in a, even a very naturalistic piece. I think that this is one of the things that uh, I, I enjoy about the work. I, I like the solidity that, uh, that that's played with here, where you have that really dark shape that's so solid above the window, and then you have the kind of gray shapes that are relative to it that sort of play back and forth. So yeah. I was I was I thought this was a really good choice as well, and a, and a and a very sophisticated painting when it comes to understanding these these other elements other than just looking at it in a descriptive way that it's a building with sunlight on it yeah you know? yeah okay so then we'll go on to the next one this one is um uh the pick on the drawings the best drawing um i'd like to hear your your idea on this one right um so there were not a lot of drawings uh submitted um and uh but even if there there were i think i i would have uh been attracted to this one, um, which uh, has such a um, beautiful, calm, quiet, uh, luminous presence, you know, and the use of the, just the use of the page to, um, to bring all of that light um, through the image is, is powerful. Um, in some ways, a very traditional image, um, if you think about some of the uh, Romantic painters, German Romanticism. Uh, uh, the uh, there's a whole tradition of of uh, the window uh, painting, Fenstern builder, where we we see um, often see objects in front of in front of a um, of a window like this, um, and very formal that that the grid that's created, and then uh, throwing the subject, uh, the foreground uh, plants into relief. Um, so, uh, yeah, and a very nice, uh, mix of, uh, some, you know, careful looking at the, at the, uh, subject, um, some detail, but also, uh, real, real firm, strong abstraction, not unlike the work we were just looking at in terms of architecture shadows, um, those shadows along the bottom, I think, which we might not even notice. Shadows are so easy to overlook, and um, we rely on artists to see them <laughs> mm -hmm. for us and um, and make them so important. Yeah, this is a uh, for me. I, I looked at it and I thought, well, yeah, it's all about design, and and it's interesting. But if the if the piece had had a a continuation out the window into the landscape, I think it wouldn't hold together so so powerfully. I think the strength of that blank window is really important. And then, you know, I I agree with you. That the interesting thing that I found was the three, the three, the number three, mm -hmm. the three, three pots, okay? Yeah. And how they play against one another in a, in a kind of trinity uh, kind of combination there. Uh, so it's almost, uh, you know, when we talk in terms of that number, I've always found it to be like a family, you know, yeah, and yeah. You, kind of, you kind of experience it that way. Right. Um, and the three against the four of the uh, window panes or the four bricks. Uh, so, um, yeah, this yeah. is, you know, uh, uh, I, I didn't uh, say who did it and that, but this is called Morning Light and it's Alka uh, Kahana. And uh, I think that's another. Um, you know, it's interesting to see what, uh, of course, we have these different categories. So the pieces are um, judged against the, the work submitted in those categories as well. Okay, so then the next one is, uh, this is the rice field. It's uh, Michiro Ri uh, Mizuchi, okay? And uh, uh, maybe you can speak a little bit about this. Sure. Um, 
there were not um, a lot of abstract uh, paintings um, presented. And um, so it, it stood out um, for that reason, but that in itself is nothing good necessarily. <laughs> um, I think why I kept coming back to this, um, there was something very, very satisfying about the uh, touch for one thing. I think there's, there's a very, you know, we think about stripes and, you know, stripes have a big history in abstraction, whether you want to talk about, you know, Frank Stella or Jean Davis. Um, but they were very hard edged, you know, and Barnett Newman. Uh, well, Barnett Newman, you start to get interesting things happening on the edges. And I think this is really interesting for the variety of, of uh, touch where you have, um, it looks like some, some, some straight edge work. Um, and then a lot of, 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 of much looser painting, both under and over, lots of layering and um, a really a wonderful rhythms get set up and just a, uh, a nice uh, free kind of um, intuitive approach to a kind of painting that can get, you know, very um, rigid if, uh, <laughs> if you're not, uh, if, you, if you're not careful. Um, so it, it stayed very fresh. I like the, especially parts at like bottom left, upper right, where, you know, it's not all about stripes. There's something uh, coming through, something has, um, could be a whole other image under there. Um, so I just, uh, and the palette, it has a nice control to it, you know, basically kind of, kind of complements blues versus, versus oranges. Um, and I'm sure you teach that you know, it's, it's a good idea to um, not use every, every color in the paint box. Um, and I appreciated that too. Yeah, and I think when I got out of it, uh, you know, of course, the, the strength of the horizontal is always an element that, uh, you know, when we look in terms of design, what that, uh, what that means. Uh, it's interesting to see for me, I, I keep going to this one stripe in the lower third of the painting, the, the kind of pinkish, uh, uh, striped is against the blue. The two blues, because, because yeah. It's edged on both sides mm -hmm. and becomes sort of the, uh, you, you don't think of it, but optically, uh, for me, it, it uh, creates a, a measurement between that and all the pattern that's going on in the, in the work. Yeah. So you have to have that kind of uh, element, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. but this one is kind of disguised because you don't really see it. But then when you study the painting, you start to realize its presence, you know? Right. And so it's kind of where a horizon line might be. Yeah. Um, and then the, there's the title rice field, which uh, kind of sneaks up on you. And, um, you know, uh, titles are interesting. Um, I don't see a rice field, but, yeah. but there's, there's some feeling of, of order. Those, you know, those rice patties that very, very regular and um, maybe a sense of water. Rice is, rice is grown in water. I'm, I'm, just free associating here, but uh, titles titles can do a lot, yeah. uh, and uh, that's, that's a good, good one. Talk about that. I I, I know that I, I had a good friend who um, uh, by the name of Martin Galvin, and I don't know if you remember. I, I studied poetry with Mr. Galvin okay. in, at so, Whitman. There you yeah, go. sorry that he's yeah. not with us. Yeah, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. But the thing is, he's, he taught so many uh, people so many things. And him being my uh, really one of my best friends, he really taught me uh, poetry. And I started to realize that I could see poetry in my work. And when I saw it, uh, that, uh, that became an important element. And one time I was having a show and I had a, a, a person come in and look at my work. And... Uh, say, and sh she was an artist, say, uh, you know, you're writing poetry and I'm writing a novel, right? That's what mm -hmm. she said about her own work. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, this is the kind of thing that uh, is real important too. Do you, can you speak anything to that at all? Um, well, I, I love what you just said. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think, um, you know, I just think it's important for, for artists to, um, but when inspired by all the arts, you know. Yeah, when um, they're titling their work. Uh, oh, oh, titling in particular. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, 
you know, it's, it's fine to, you know, just go with like number one or, <laughs> you know, 5A or the way a lot of, a lot of modern artists do. But, but I think um, a title can just, um, it can be suggestive, you know, in a, in a poetic way, as, as you were, as you were just saying. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I mentioned Frank Stella earlier, he, he gave titles that were kind of inscrutable and um, sort of at a complete tangent to what he might have been doing. Um, but this, this is a title that um, really, really sort of seems um, sincere, intentional. It, it, it opens up something about the painting that we wouldn't, that we wouldn't get. So I think um, it's a powerful thing and it will, it will condition a response. So I would say, um, uh, you know, it's really worth thinking about if you, if you want to have a title other than untitled, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, what's it going to be? That is, um, there are not too many art forms where you have that opportunity to um, put a stamp on the work that's, that's going to, that's how it's going to be known. And, and, and uh, it's, it's very powerful. Yeah. And I, I think for me, when I title my work, I think I, um, uh, it comes after the work. So in other words, it's not, yeah. the title doesn't direct the work. It's sort of, I find the title from it. Yeah. Uh, so this is a, uh, an interesting piece. This is a, a, the best mixed media piece. It's called New World, uh, Marion Willinger. And uh, maybe you can speak to- Sure, how, how sure. Is this one? Um, there were some great um, mixed media submissions and um, they were a little harder to judge because you know, you really want to see the media, the different media <laughs> up close. But I think this one for me, it really embodies the idea of mixed media because there's, there's so many different uh, things happening here. It looks like a, a torn up um, uh, etching possibly, or um, maybe pieces of charcoal drawing, um, elements of watercolor, uh, possibly uh, atomized or sprayed in some cases, or, you know, sort of, sort of running in other cases. Um, and so I like that about it. And, um, and then it, it creates a scene. We were just talking about titles, new world, you know, I think brave new world. <laughs> what kind of world is this? It's, there's a surrealism uh, to it. There's a sense of, um, figures or plants are reaching up seed pods, something is, um, you know, developing or uh, coming into being um, in a landscape horizontal format. Um, and, and yet I think what I, what I really liked about it is, is more the material uh, qualities, the freedom of this, of this tearing and combining and, and again, a lot of control. I mean, maybe I'm a control freak, but <laughs> I think there's, there's a controlled, uh, limited uh, palette, all oh, these beautiful grays. And um, I just, uh, you know, kept coming back to it as a uh, very uh, satisfying. Yeah, I was, uh, when you chose this one, um, I, I saw the uniqueness in it. Maybe it's the, the medium because it will, you can apply it in a way that uh, makes this kind of uh, art, okay? But the, um, the interesting thing is that it really uh, sets my mind working, you know, in a lot of, in multiple ways. And uh, the, the feeling that I get from it, um, I, I get some kind of historical um, uh, feeling, okay? Just in the nature of whether it's the future or whether it's the past, it has that kind of connection to me, all right? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I, I just felt uh, this was a, a very powerful piece, uh, like you said, with its color and its pattern of shape. Um, the, um, when uh, you being a curator at the, at the National Gallery, and um, when you're looking at work, say, I know you every so often will purchase something, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you how do you go about picking a, a making a choice on something like that? How does that uh, you know just to share with our viewers? Sure. Well, bit. I mean, one of the pleasures of, of 
doing a, a jury like this is that um, it's just sort of pure visual response. Um, when you're acquiring something for, for a great museum, of course, you're thinking about history, about um, the artist um, and uh, his or her place uh, in the collection, in the whole history of art. Um, you might be thinking about, um, you know, what the museum can afford, what the museum needs or doesn't have enough of, lots of factors. Um, and yet, um, it still comes down to this very immediate aesthetic response. And, you know, I don't care how much we need the piece or, or, or what kind of name recognition the artist has. Um, if I don't like it, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me, then we're just here in the yellow barn saying, you know, good, better, best, yeah. work on this some more, send it back to the studio. Um, so uh, I try to keep it, you know, just as immediate uh, as possible. And uh, that's, that's the, the pleasure so of you it. Go with your, you go with your feelings is what try, you say. Try to, try to remember the gut, yeah. yeah. And, and one other thing about this, I, I like the ripping up of, of uh, the work. And I would say uh, to artists, um, uh, rip up your work. <laughs> well, you know, it, was Hel it wasn't it Helen Frankenthaler who did that later on in her career? Uh, absolutely. absolutely. It was very interesting to see what yeah. she was doing with her paintings at the, uh, after. And that, uh, there are plenty of times I go in my studio and I think I want to do a Helen Frankenthaler. Yeah, rather well. Lots of, yeah. lots of people. Uh, uh, Ellsworth Kelly, rip, rip up your work and uh, use it again. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so now here are the honorable mentions. Those were, the, those were our awards. Uh, this is our honorable mentions. And uh, I know these are the ones that you probably had to uh, decide whether they were going to be winners or whether they were going to be uh, just, um, you know, placed yeah. into the honorable mention right. car category. But truthfully, you know, uh, that's a choice that you make. But at the same time, uh, these pieces also speak very strongly. So here yeah. we're going to go with the, the, the first one, which is Night Falling, Kathleen Saifang. All right. And uh, your ideas on this. Sure. Right. Well, I'm, I'm glad we had the honorable mention category because uh, it was hard to leave a lot of works uh, behind. And um, I mean, not to mention just, you know, what was going to be in the show. Uh, so this in some ways uh, recalls the the best of show work that is it's a uh, looks like a river uh, landscape sunset um, and uh, some of the same drama that focus um, you know on a central point that things are things are uh, going back to or coming out of um, and uh, and yet it's, it has a very different feeling it's it's um, the uh, the brushwork is um, is less prominent. It's um, more about maybe uh, mood, color mood. Um, like that sort of, the way the purple is sort of dragged down on the right uh, across the uh, across the little bit of, bit of water there. Uh, thinking about, you know, Turner maybe, or uh, uh, Whistler. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, really nice and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I could um, pick it out. Yeah, this is the drama in this one, I think is what pull, pulled me to it. And you're right about the, uh, you know, using Turner as an example, I think, uh, or Whistler, they both had that kind of uh, sensitivity to, uh, to some atmospheric quality, you know, yeah. that yeah. I think we're getting with the color and, and the, the combinations of the colors that uh, she used here, but also the contrast yeah, you can't help but look at this piece, you know? So, and, and then it has all that uh, linear quality of drawing you in, which I think is a, a yes, very- you want, to, you want to go back. You yeah, want to go back in back there. Into, into that depth. Okay, so then the next one is um, this one. This is an interesting choice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, one of the shows I've been working on is a Philip Gustin show and he, he loved to paint um, late in his career, these 
big uh, walls, brick walls or um, piles of legs with, with gaps. And he, he would, and there's one movie where he points to the gap and he says, that's where it's happening. That's where it's all happening in the gap. And, and I thought of that here because um, yeah, it's a stone wall, but uh, those gaps where we see, you know, see grass or sky, the rhythm of those gaps, um, very abstract uh, in some ways and uh, very descriptive at the same time. Um, gouache, nice uh, layering, uh, sort of scumbling. So we see see some darker colors through through the lighter colors. Um, yeah, just um, it, it very sharp, jagged. You know, <laughs> it really gives you physical feelings to uh, look at that. Yeah, this was a this was a piece that I I found very. Um, unique you know and i think the uh uh when we talk in terms of just this kind of structure the way the idea is built you can kind of get a feeling like they're just like touches in small areas where everything is balanced it's not like layering of things but just like the corners of things touching each other i i uh, and then you're going beyond it i i like the depth in it too i i think that gap that you're saying really takes us into another realm in a way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just by the, the nature of the colors, I think there's a certain kind of uh, contrast between that abstraction and then that kind of naturalism that you're, you're dealing with too. Yeah, um, yeah so that... Uh, there's some nice little touches with the, the other end of the brush too to pick out some of the... Uh some of the lines, some yeah. of the contours. Isn't it? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty impressive that way. Yeah. And then this one, mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, Early Morning Acceptance by R Ruth Ann Uthral. And mm -hmm. uh, maybe hear your ideas on this. Sure. One. I mean, this reminded me of uh, Haynes Point, one of, my, one of my favorite places in DC. I don't think it is Haynes Point exactly, but um, that place where the, you know, the city meets the water and, um, and we were talking about shadows earlier, and this one, wow, the, the shadows are so um, dramatic and continuous with the tree. So we don't really know um, where the tree uh, stops and the shadow starts. And, you know, I think that reminds us that shadows are, are um, really, um, they can be very tangible. And uh, also, uh, like the the uh, best of show landscape, just a lot of a lot of drama here, sweeping movement um, coming out, you know, towards us or back into the painting. Um, so yeah, um, a lot to like here. Yeah, the Kiriko does the, the, does it bring anything up on the Kiriko and the long shadows? Do you yes, think yes, of that too. You know, and that's the psychology uh, too, the drama, the the strangeness. Um, there's something creeping and grasping right about those shadows and then that brings us to the title which which i puzzled over early morning acceptance you know um early morning is is a fine title but you know acceptance what what are we accepting you know <laughs> what we're not accepting uh gives it a um yeah. uh, possibly a mournful kind of um uh feeling interesting yeah, and then that backlighting, the, just the drama of that, I think, uh, is uh, is interesting too. You almost feel like it's going to be blinding light if you, you you move out of the shadows. Yeah. Um, so then the next one uh, on display by Peter uh, Sieg. Yeah. Um, this struck me for a number of reasons. Um, it's it's just it's very a solid, fine, um, multi-figure painting you know this is somebody who who really knows uh his way around the figure uh, as as an oil painter um so you know posture movement anatomy it's it's all convincing and uh the but that's that's really a, a, that's sort of the given but then there's something uh, very creative about about it. It's kind of about art, I guess. I guess these folks are in a gallery. There's sort of rectangles floating around and a sense of works on display. And 
and that title is a good one. You know, what is on display? Is it is it that um, woman in the uh, in the print dress who is on display? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, she is she is isolated and sort of picked out. Um, or is it um, you know when we go to an art gallery? the art is on display but but you know we're on display <laughs> and i think this is very much about that kind of social observation how do we behave and how how do people interact in in that situation yeah i wanted to make uh, just a comment i want to correct this this is patrick's thing not peter and i think the uh, you you hit it right the nail on the head i i i found this piece incredibly intriguing uh you know because of that duality that uh uh, are we looking at the gallery or are we looking at the, the, the woman, mm -hmm. right? And she's obviously not uh, connected to us. She's looking in another direction. Yeah. So it takes us, uh, takes us beyond uh, just what we're seeing. And I think that that's, uh, you know, adds to this kind of um, uh, illusion that you're talking about. The atmosphere I found very fascinating in the way the colors are used to kind of uh, communicate seeing and in that uh, you know we have that really strong print which we really focus on and then everything else tends to become somewhat blurry and almost amorphic you know right. in the way it's, the yeah. way it's moving the uh, whole thing could almost be a reflection mm -hmm. we're seeing through glass there are a couple of um, sort of streaks that uh, are intriguing uh, and the color is there, you know. Now we we've, we've seen a number of your pieces that you've picked that are somewhat plein air or in the present. Uh, this, you know, uh, probably wasn't painted in the art gallery at the time. How do you deal with uh, photography as a uh, an element of, uh, say, the source that you might be working from? Yeah, I I think that's a great question, and I had that thought, you know. Um, how much is is there a, an important photographic source here and there were some great uh paintings um in the show um that were photorealist that were clearly um done uh sort of transcribed transformed from photographs and um i'm not usually attracted to that work i should just say so there were some very impressive examples of that that i that i didn't um pick out for for mention that will be in the show um but this one um i like because uh there's a photographic sense to it but it 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 really um it's it's been um transformed into something um you know, that uh, doesn't feel uh, fixed the way a photograph uh, mm -hmm. can, you know, there's, there's still a lot of, of, of movement and um, simplification, um, blurring uh, and uh, personal, personal touch that, um, you know, I think it's important to, to uh, maintain, uh, even when you're using a photograph, I don't know what. What do you think about how, how do you deal with, well, this with is, that? This with is your what teaching? I have. I have an issue too because I, I whenever I'm uh, dealing with this, I mean, now we're under this uh, where we're working virtually, so everything tends to be being worked too flat, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I do have a class where we do go out and paint on location and meet, but that's outdoors. But uh, the uh, and we're going to do that through the winter, so it'll be very interesting to see what the results will be, but. Uh, you know, one of the things I try to encourage people is, you know, I was talking about uh, Wolf Kahn in one of the lectures and, you know, I said he was working from memories, working from photos, and he's working from sketches. I mean, he's working from all three things. It's not just uh, using the photo as a guide. But, you know, postmodernism, the photo has become a, a, an important source for a number of artists. And, uh, and I, I'm just wondering, you know, you being a curator at, 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 where you're, um, you know, when I went up to the uh, Barnes exhibition, for instance, the, the piece that stands out that seems to be the most photographic is the one that De Chirico did of Barnes when he, when I guess mm -hmm. Barnes couldn't pose, so he must have had mm -hmm. a photograph mm -hmm. and he did a drawing of him that looked mm -hmm. like it came right from the photo, all right? And, but then yeah. the rest of the work in the, in the uh, Barnes doesn't have that quality about it. And I think that you have now, you have artists like uh, Janet Fish, for instance, who, um, mm -hmm. you know, is very, very graphic. And uh, I saw her work in the, the pastel show at the National Gallery. 
and I don't mm -hmm. know if you're familiar yeah. with that, but I, yes. I couldn't find I couldn't find a place for that painting. Mm -hmm. That painting just didn't fit with the other pastels that I I felt uh, were in the show, and that's why I'm asking you because you can you can almost say when you look at some some of the work that it has that kind of photographic feel to it, and I just wondered yeah. how you would how you would uh, you know yeah comment on it yeah. Um... I, I, I feel the same way and um, but I think you know a great a great photo realist painting you know mm -hmm. um, it accomplishes something that uh, that is particular to painting I think uh, you know uh, Richard Estes just to take you know yeah. a classic example um, I mean, for one thing, there's the choice of the, the, the image, you know, there's the taking of the photograph that becomes uh, very important. Mm -hmm. And um, so in some ways, we're, we're um, evaluating it as, as a photograph, <laughs> you know, that first, that first act, and then the translation into paint. Um, you know, it's never just photographic. It's never photographic. There are always, there's simplifications, there's um, interpretations that that happen that then um, make sense of the painting as a painting. Um, and I think, you know, that's got to happen. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't happen, then you might as well just have the photograph. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that that's one of the things that, uh, you know, we, we have now. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of people that are wedded to using that source and how that source is going to change over the years. Uh, you know, we're not going to continue taking photos. We'll probably have stereo photography uh, as well, you know, and I think that this is one of the issues too. And, you know, you have movies and things like that that you can work from. So I think that, the, yeah, all the technology that we have now, I guess you're having to deal with that in, in looking at uh, the, uh, the art that's being produced, I guess, when you're, when you're looking at a show. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, which is why um, what you're doing, the Yellow Barn is doing, uh, is so important. Mm -hmm. where you just, uh, you know, get out there in the world and uh, it's you and uh, <laughs> right. we're the you ideas. and the subject. Yeah, where the ideas happen, I think. You know, yeah. that's, that's why I, I, I particularly like being in that moment. But, I, you know, I, I can see now, you know, when we're looking at, uh, like, for instance, this particular piece, this piece goes beyond that. And I think yeah. that that's the, yeah. that's the key, you know, when we're, when we're looking at work. So, um, you know, we're not wedded to it as being a process. Uh, okay, so then the next one. This is Empyrean by uh, Jan uh, Rowland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, this follows on the last one in some ways and on what we've been saying. Um, there is almost at, at the top center there, there's almost a, a sense of a, um, a poster or a, a photographic image of a, of a woman. Mm -hmm. um, there seems to be, um, uh, you know, so there's, um, there's a couple of faces uh, in there. There's just, this is, a, this was, I thought, one of the most ambitious paintings uh, in the show, actually. I mean, the size, the number of things going on. Um, are we in a mall architecture? There's, uh, there's foliage. Um, plants there are these uh, images that might be from from uh, pop culture a lot a lot of different patterns um that great grid that starts to happen at the top right and then gets transformed in the middle um so uh you know um maybe maybe almost too much going on it it it, it uh, but it kept it kept my attention trying to trying to figure it out and um so so i i um was quite quite sure from the beginning that this this um this was important uh and um again the the palette is is pretty controlled i think that that's crucial because if you're going to do something this complicated you you better find some ways to keep it simple um great drawing beautiful musical rhythmic uh uh drawing especially in those uh, plant forms yeah, what about what about you, Walt? Well, you know, I see it as a collage of ideas, you know, and, mm -hmm. and you're right. I mean, your um, your mind is constantly changing uh, ideas. In other words, you're uh, 
you're, you're uh, finding your way through the painting. And I think, uh, you know, whether it becomes just a rhythmic pattern or whether it becomes a descriptive uh, element, uh, like a bird or, or, or a face, you know, or plants, I think that's the kind of uh, contradiction that we have here. I was telling my uh, uh, students that are studying with me that if they're going to pick an idea that they need to use an idea noun. And this would mm. be a great one for contradiction. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have that kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, aspect yeah. to, to uh, you know, bringing that kind of uh, design element, uh, you know, where you put all these things together as, as an assemblage, you know. Yeah. Right. I think that this is uh, this is what we have. Uh, the yes. color combinations uh, interest me because of the contrasting colors. I think uh, I get a lot out of the uh, the richness of some of the colors just for their own properties, you know. Yeah. And I think yeah. that that's the other part of it too. So it's it's fascinating. It's fascinating that it has so much going on. That sometimes you think, oh, maybe it's over the top with uh, too many ideas. But in this one, you you can't help but be attracted to it. You're not yeah. repulsed yeah. by it, you know. Yeah, and so. then and the title, Empyrean, which I think refers to the heavens, mm -hmm. the vault of the heavens. So, um, uh, I I'm that just it's something to think about. Yeah, and and you know this is one that we were talking about using the photo. Uh, here's where you can actually conceptualize using more than one photo. Or one one source. Yes, and, and that that can really, um, yeah, take take some of the power away from the single photographic image and uh, right. just start to enter into it, manipulate it, take control of it. Yeah, and I think that that's a good point. That, that term, take control, because I think that when people just copy the photographic image, they're not in control. You know, yeah. and I think that that's the. Uh, uh, you know the way to look at the, look at it that way. So here you you've got those multiple images, and they're and they're working very well with each other. Okay, so then the next one, this is Golden Reflections Kyoto by Anne Roselli. Yeah, um, maybe one of one of the smallest um, paintings um, that I just kept uh, kept looking at it. Um, I've been to Kyoto and. Uh, it it, um, it has a, a, a beautiful feeling of maybe a, a temple reflected in water. Um, I think it's all reflection, actually. I don't I don't think I see um, a a horizon or a place where the water meets the land. I think it's all reflection, which is an interesting idea. And I liked um, I like the, the dragging texture of those yellows and golds, this sort of dragged, uh, somewhat dry brush. Um, and that in contrast with, with the, um, the water, the uh, sort of denser uh, water, um, thicker, thicker paint there. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I, I just, um, there's a lot of, oh, it's a lot of abstraction here that repetition, you know, we haven't talked about that much, but that insistence on this, you know, that, that form, that yellow kind of oblong form that keeps getting repeated. Um, so uh, I liked all that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I see this like a heartbeat. I, I can feel a rhythm in it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what she does very well here. Uh, and of course the reflection helps with that because the water taking, you know, water defines things, you know, in a, mm -hmm. in a water way. Yes, and you, and you right. Really feel, you really feel that uh, the control of the water in the piece, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, and it, even if you didn't know that it was water, you would, you would sense that liquid quality. Right. So I think, uh, you know, she, she hit that, uh, hit that well. And then I, I really like her color. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, this, you know, um, you know, it was a small piece, eight by 10, even close up reads very, very well. And I think the, um, uh, sometimes, you know, that can be, you know, when we're looking at a computer screen, we're not standing back six feet to take a look at a piece. So here you're getting the best that you can yeah. see, uh, the close up of it. Okay, so then the next one, this is called Autumn Prelude by Mary uh, Kosterlitz. Yeah, um, so 
I, this is one I really wanted to see in person. I was, I was very um, intrigued by the technique, which um, it says oil and acrylic. Um, there's clearly a lot of, a lot of turpentine or, or the equivalent that's just sort of leaching these colors out and creating all this bleeding and this monochrome, this almost grisaille um, sense of a very autumnal sense of, of uh, sort of uh, those brown uh, colors. Um, I liked all that. And, and then the use of, I guess it's the ground, this kind of, um, kind of uh, yellowish ground that gives a tonality to the whole piece and that, that whether it reads as road, I guess, or sky, um, it's just, it's a very effective uh, use of, of the ground. What's interesting, I don't know if you can see the connection with Max Ernst, but it feels like a yes. like an Ernst to me. Okay? I do, I do, and and I and yeah. I think that the, this is one of the unique things that Ernst did those frottages, which were right. rubbings, where then he came back and he solidified uh, you know colors around and made a defined form, you know, and this is what you're feeling. I know how this piece was made. I know that it's done with a squeegee. Mm, okay. Right. So she was talking about her approach the the other day, and uh, and uh, I, I found uh, it fascinating. And and everybody that was listening to it, and she was in one of my classes, um, uh, felt that it was a, a really unique uh, uh, way of working. And they all wanted to know where she got the squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Copying is great. Getting inspired. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. All of a yeah. sudden, it's like uh, yeah, a, a different way of working. But yeah. you know, the design works here, and it works both abstractly and representationally. And this is one of the uh, the few that I think I really feel the negative space. In other words, when we talk in terms of the, st the silence and the sound. You know, in music, uh, this is the, the yellows are the silence essentially. Mm -hmm. They're so solid and um, you know seem to be constant. Uh, yeah, this this worked out really mm -hmm. well, and the design I think uh, was very strong too. Yeah, the, um, and I know what you what you said about Ernst that I mean, you know, she's not doing the same technique, but it's the dripping is is a kind of automatic surrealist. It's some you know it's creating some accidents that that then have a real uh, interesting suggestive uh, force to them yeah and i think that that's what uh, and then the, the monochromatic palette do you uh, can you speak a little bit about that at all did you did you think about the the color combinations or anything um yeah i think that that's uh, something else that that stands out and and yet there's a lot of color within that very narrow range right mm -hmm. um and uh you know and and different uh, densities but um but i think what you were saying about positive negative space that that really kind of kind of focuses that question it's either kind of positive or negative uh or vice versa however you want to look at it and and it, it um you know just like with cubism you know we colors kind of taken out of the equation, we can really focus on on other things, on, on all the other interesting things going on. And this is one of these, when I was talking about the uh, different properties that a painting would, would have, the tactile property, I think is what's uh, speaking here too, you know, which I think is a, a strong element. Yeah. So let's, let's go on to the next one. This one is Long Time Coming with Meredith Morris. Right, so, um, this was one of um, several uh, portraits or, or figure paintings that um, were quite realistic and um, clearly very, very capable. Um, and I think the reason I picked this one is that look, that pose and that look, the, 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 the hooded eyes, the, the wool cap, um, the, um, the, the flag, uh, <laughs> cape, um, there's, um, there's real content here. You know, what, what has been a long time coming, what kind of, uh, uh, justice or, um, inclusion, um, 
uh, acknowledgement. Um, uh, there's obviously issues of race and patriotism and uh, all of that painted beautifully. I mean, just the handling of, of the cape, you know, and the folds and the shadows um, set off by that really interesting, unexpected background. Usually for a painting like this, you'd expect the whole thing to be kind of an equal level of, of realism. And I think the background is, is really key in, in the way it um, contrasts and, and sets off the figure. Yeah, I agree too, because I think that, you know, the drama of the, of the pose and the, and the uh, portrait, you know, is, is strongly descriptive. And then you have that uh, uh, winter cold all right. Yeah, In other words, right. you have that 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 contrast of right. uh, temperature, you know, which yes. I think is uh, which is also very fascinating. That and that's a creative process. That's the artist making that kind of decision, mm -hmm. and you start to see the the importance of what it is to be able to build on an idea. And I think that this has worked out well. This interesting triangle that she uses design wise for the figure uh, is also uh, fascinating mm -hmm. because of the strength of the. Uh, just the design of the, the putting the figure in a shape, you yeah. know, like Bellows yeah. did with the with the boxers. He, right. You know, so I think that uh, you, you get the feeling of that as well. And then, like you said, the, just the masterful handling. I think that's one of the things that speaks to me. Uh, and you can capture uh, somebody's demeanor, somebody's personality, um, you know, and do it in a way that feels real and not mm -hmm. photographic, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This has that reality to it, which I think, you know, when we look at a lot of the work, uh, this is one that has a, a much more re reality to the mm -hmm. to its feeling, which yeah. is which is more important than sometimes the reality of what it looks like, you know. Yeah. And right. I think that that's what we're getting here. So, uh, yeah, it's a it is a, a a powerful piece. And then this is our last one. It's Cabochon, and uh, it's uh, Kelly Irvin. And I wonder uh, how you um, how you picked yeah. this one. This one I really like, and um, again, there weren't a, a lot of um, you know pure abstractions. Um, I looked up the title. I can't remember what it means. It, it is a word that has something to do with oh, it's little it's little polished um, stones. Um, like uh, semi-precious uh, stones that are polished. Um, so I just really liked um, the, well, there's a sense of like several, several layers of things happening, you know, at once. Um, there's that, there's the, the, several layers of these circles. Some are filled, some aren't, different colors. Then there's sort of a background um, that they interact with, um, a wave, a sort of a wave-like motion, um, just a lot of pleasure in uh, the variety of um, uh, how, these, how these things are, are interacting and setting up patterns, the darker ones, you can sort of follow them with the lighter ones. Um, and so I, I, I was really attracted uh, to this one and um, didn't want to let it go. <laughs> well, let me ask you, this is, this is important because being head of modern art, I think uh, a lot of the uh, strength of modern art, of course, is the movements of, uh, that start you know, uh, with, with the whole nature of trying to become more abstract. And right. I think that the, uh, how, how do you how do you judge something? I mean, uh, or how do you feel about uh, just the nature of abstract thinking? What is it that's important to you when you're looking at any piece that's abstract? What are you uh, What are you looking for? Yeah. Well, I think on a personal level, I I was attracted to this somewhat like I was attracted to the rice field painting. Um, which is the best oil painting um, because there is geometry, but I uh, personally, I, I like to see the artist touch, you know, and a, a sort of human touch, the painter uh, at work, even if it's a quite geometric um, idea or schema. 
whether it's stripes or circles. I mean, there's, um, uh, this isn't very, for me, it's still very involved with, with perception, um, patterns, things about the natural world. We might not know what they are. Um, complexity. Um, so uh, abstract paintings that are totally flat. I mean, they've had an important place in 20th century art and uh, I'm more attracted to the ones that let in uh, more things, more, more space, more atmosphere, more touch, um, whatever it is. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. The, the Bauhaus comes up to, uh, for me. I don't know how much it has influenced you, but whenever I look at the nature of abstraction, I kind of define abstraction by the way those artists were really looking at the at things. Uh, do you yeah. agree with me? Absolutely. I think whether we think about the Bauhaus or maybe Black Mountain College, um, that kind of pedagogy where you are, you know, you're, it's, it's, there's a lot of abstraction design, but you're looking at patterns in, in nature often. Um, think of, you know, Annie Albers weavings, um, where there's, there's complexity and rhythm and all of, all of these um, elements. And there's a sense of, I think for Bauhaus and Black Mountain, sense of like process and experimentation, um, you know, working the variations um, on a theme. Um, I think that, uh, you know, not so much necessarily to get a result, but to see, see what happens you know, to see what happens when you change something. Joseph Albert's interaction of colors, you know, put one color next to another, what happens? What happens to our perception? This, this um, you know, has a lot of that feeling in it, I think, um, exploration. Is there any books that uh, someone can read that would really set their mind in a way of really understanding the power of abstract? I mean, we're talking about modernism and we're talking about a period of uh, uh, dealing with uh, an idea, you know, the yeah. whole sense of abstraction, but are there any uh, authors or um, books that you could recommend? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you have a lot of them. There's a few, you. I mean, there's a few, right? <laughs> All of those. Um, but, uh, well, we mentioned the, you know, the Albers interaction of colors that, that's a, um, that's a great uh, thing to experience, you know. Uh, uh, it's not so much a book to read, but to um, to uh, study and um, um, you know work through. Um, I think that um, you know the National Gallery has has the Mellon Lectures every year, and uh, Kirk Varnado, the late uh, curator at Museum of Modern Art, gave he gave uh, lectures on abstraction. Um, published as a book called Pictures of Nothing, <laughs> which is a great title. Um, and I think that's, it's, it's not very jargony. It's very, very accessible. And uh, I think that that's a good place to start. Um, I think Meyer Shapiro was a great art historian, uh, professor at Columbia, who um, wrote about modern art from Seurat, you know, all the way up to uh, you know the mid mid twentieth century, um, more uh, there's a collected essays of uh, that he um, put out called um, I think it's just called Modern Art. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, those are some places to start. Yeah, let me ask you. Let me ask you if, if this goes back. This may go back too too far for you, I'm not sure, but John Kennedy's Mainstreams of Modern mm -hmm. Art. Absolutely, I had that on my shelf, Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That was the one that started me, all right, mm -hmm. understanding a lot more about what painting was and, and the, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I kind of refer to these books every once in a while, you almost re, revisit them, you know, because it's really important. But yeah. it's it's good to have, uh, you know, your opinion on these on these things, especially, the nature of abstraction. We have a number of very fine abstract uh, uh, painting teachers at the Yellow Barn that I think, you know, really under, uh, understand that. And I don't know if, uh, uh, of course, she, she passed away was Helen Corning. Do you remember Helen Corning at all? Name no, no. Her? Okay, no. well, she, she taught for us for many years and uh, she was a, a real guide in, in uh, 
really dealing with uh, just the whole nature of thinking abstractly and mm -hmm. uh, so I, and especially non-objective abstract thinking. Yeah. So yeah. I think that that was that was one of her her gifts that she could pass on to everyone. Well, this is a it's been a pleasure uh, having you. Okay. Um, Absolutely. You know, I feel like, I mean, as we went on, we we we're talking more and more. I feel like we, we should go back to the beginning and talk talk about the first ones again. <laughs> but um, but it really it really was great to um, compare notes and um, you know I I what what you're doing? Oh, did we? Oh, we just lost yeah, our screen share. Yeah, but but. Um, I admire everything you're doing at, at the Yellow Barn, and um, so glad we had our connection uh, back when I was uh, calling you Mr. Bartman, and I was I was in uh, Whitman High School. Uh, yeah, those were those were great years, and, yeah. and honestly, um, you know, the, the career that I've had, uh, I, what I can say about it is that you know we we there have been a lot of people that have benefited from all the the work that everyone has done, and um, you know. Uh, you know, just having you here today, I'm going to tell you, it, it means a lot, but it also, I, I'm sure people looking at this video are going to learn a lot, you know, from you right. and the comments that you, you've given us. Uh, you know, so we just have to stay in touch a little bit more, okay? I happy, see you about every, every 10 years, right? Oh, so. happy, to, happy to do this again when you, when you, when you run out of other jurors. <laughs> well, I might have you back again for sure. I mean, it's, uh, it's the kind of thing, even uh, just uh, having a, uh, uh, a night with you would be a great one again. So hopefully we can get back to the okay. studio. Okay, one day. And yeah. congratulations to all the artists. Just so much impressive work and I really enjoyed uh, dealing with it, so. Well, thank you again, Harry, yeah. and we'll, okay. we'll see you. All right, have a great holiday. All you right, too, Art. Well, bye-bye.